guys, Dave from Days Lawyer Shopworks here, and on this episode we're continuing our cheap 440 build with another short video. So this one is going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to talk about something that rarely gets talked about when assembling an engine. Um, it doesn't come up very often. Usually an engine builder will take care of it for you, and but if you're building, like normally say these pistons are semi-floating, so the pin and the rod are pressed together you can see the two of them are moving back and forth and then the other style is full floating I prefer full floating because I can do all my assembly myself I don't need to take it to a machine shop to use uh, specialty tools to press everything together or build my own specialty tools totally doable not my flavor um, now when you are assembling your piston and connecting rod there is an offset you can't really see it on this guy maybe you can um, this pit if you drew a line from the center of this bolt to this bolt you would see that it is offset over the reason for that is when you look down this is cylinder number two when you look down cylinder number two you can see that half the main journal on the crankshaft is in place centered up with this hole go around the other side and the other journal will be centered up with this hole the importance of that orientation has to do with the connecting rod and the offset and they are designed to you know they have to run together but they still have to be centered in each cylinder so they design an offset into it so they can share the journal the other side of it is going to be your piston now if you've just got simple flat top pistons or no valve reliefs or a dish piston with no other markings on it except for a forwards position then you're good to go but these ones are offset with an intake valve and an exhaust valve eye eyebrow into them so now you need to know what your orientation is so this is piston number four so it's going to sit right in here There, so number four, you can see the high side here and the low side here. This is the exhaust valve. The exhaust valve is shorter, or sorry, smaller than the intake valve. And the piston is compensated for that. These are high compression pistons. And you need these uh, eyebrows, we'll say, or cut-ins for clearance for high lift cams. Um, now something you have to think about too when you're grabbing all your brand new pistons out of the box and you're grabbing all your rods and you're putting them down one you got to get your rod correct with its offset and two you have to get the eyebrows the cutaways the reliefs correct for your application so on a normal say a dodge big block small block uh chevy uh, small blocks and I can't say big blocks for sure at this moment. I'm kind of drawing a blank. Um, this is your normal layout. Exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. You get an exhaust on the outside and then two intakes. Exhaust, exhaust in the middle and two intakes and exhaust to finish off the end. Same thing, it's identical on the other side. Then you get your, uh, say, a small block Ford where it's literally... I E I E I E I E or E I E I E I E I and that is a completely different orientation that you would need to be aware of for your engine application so when you take these guys you line them up here's piston number four and then here's piston number two side by side Let's see if I can get this right like so and like so and now you can see exhaust intake intake exhaust got to put them in, in that orientation and everything will be happy if you were to have the piston swapped you could definitely run into a uh, clearance issue between your exhaust valve and the piston or your intake valve and the piston because there's not enough room for the cutaway and having said that we can confidently say I've checked these all over all eight of them and they are all orientated the correct way for my application and I'm happy so all I'm trying to say is pay attention to your parts uh, know what your application is and 
from there you can make an educated decision on what way to lay out your parts and your components for assembly. It does get a little weird in the brain sometimes when you're working with full floating pins. You think you're doing it right and then you're actually doing a mirror image of what you need to do. So you just got to take precaution, pay attention, be patient. Get them all assembled loosely, double check your fit, and then when you're happy, you know you're good to go and you can just assemble and be confident you've got it right. That's really it guys. Uh, nothing fancy right now, so we're going to leave it at that and I hope you all got something out of it. Thanks, take care, have a good night.